Hello everybody, it's Friday, April 3rd, and it means that we're beginning to work on our wonderful project, fast and easy spring project, including applique and free motion quilting and creativity. I hope you will enjoy this free tutorial, guys, and show me what projects you end up with because it's really interesting to see what you do and to have the feedback from all of you. So today we will work on the applique part and make the long story short, let's just jump straight to our project. If you're working with a kit that you bought from me, uh, just feel free to pull it out right now. It's the right moment. So you got among the all other goodies, you got the background fabric, this beautiful ombre fabric by Moda. And here creativity begins. It's up to you how you place it, what you choose for your bottom or what you choose for your top. I prefer to use the darker color for bottom and the lighter for the top, like representing the skies, but you may do it side by side and in that case it will have a feeling that there's a source of light somewhere on that side like the sun is rising or it's a like reverse a sunset so this part is dark and here is light or maybe do the light side on bottom and the darker side on top so it's up to you and here you may start creating i even thought what if we place our piece our background like this as a diamond and hang it as a diamond so start playing i will be doing it in the way i showed you in the picture so i don't confuse you i will be just repeating what you saw on initial picture when you decided to take this class so you pulled out your background fabric also you will need the interfacing those of you who bought the kits uh, you should have the interfacing in your give me all kits so it is a thin interfacing for embroidery or uh, applique you may get it in any craft store if you didn't get the kit so just go ahead and get some interfacing for yourself it's very very cheap uh, in any craft store we will need the piece uh, like the same size of our background or a little bit smaller because we're not going to put the applique all over the place so our first step now is when we pulled out the interfacing and the backing is to iron on the interfacing okay we will iron it to the back side of our background fabric. So flip your background fabric over, place your interfacing with the sticky side down, and if you check it, you will see that one side is covered like with little dots or little um, lines, glue lines and glue dots, and the other side is very smooth and nice to touch. So you put the sticky side, not so soft side, on your interfacing, oh, on, on your background, excuse me, on the very back of your background. So you flip that over, that's my face, that's my wrong side. So wrong side up, sticky side of interfacing down. Then, Heat your iron to the medium temperatures. I use silk wool option here on my iron. And then when it's hot, we will press the interfacing and attach it to our background fabric. How do we attach it? We do not move the iron in those motions we are used to move it. We will just replace it and reposition it little like patch by patch. First of all, we start with the corner and with the bottom. We, we're attaching the bottom line first. And if there are any bubbles or any little uh, imperfections, you will have a chance to fix it and replace it. Do not do random 
applications here and there. Start line by line. I will start with my bottom and I will reposition my iron every time I feel that that section is glued. I normally count up to 10 and when it's 10, I just lift my iron, replace it and connect, attach the other part. When my all line is finished, I'm just going up and continue attaching this line. If there is a little bubble, you can see that it's imperfection. You always can pull your interfacing gently reposition it and replace it and fix your little bubble. Just be careful, be careful. So move from bottom to top by pressing and attaching layer by layer, line by line on our background. So I will go to my ironing board. I'm not ironing here on my cutting mat. So I'll be back just in a minute and we will continue. Well, I attached my interfacing to my background fabric and it worked out perfect. And now I like the surface of my background. It's very smooth. The fabric is stabilized. And why do we add interfacing? We want the fabric to be stable when we will start stitching the appliques around and attaching them to the fabric so it doesn't have any wrinkles or any bubbles or any imperfections. When we have the interfacing on our fabric, uh, it, the result will always be neat and beautiful. So now my favorite part begins. We're going to place the appliques and now we'll be working on tulips today. Uh, we will be placing the appliques the way we want, actually, and there are a few ways you may do that. And I will show you a couple, and you will choose the ones you like. So option number one, we could place our tulips in a bouquet, and I will be leaving one longer stem in the middle, and then positioning the other stems in bouquet like that, and I will cross them here on bottom so we, we could trim all the extra fabric that we're not using like this okay and then I will place the heads of my flowers I'm just improvising so play with your flowers and you all got different kits and I'm just excited to see what you guys do with your kits, especially those of you who order, ordered a uh, surprise me option. Those flowers are pretty unique and I didn't make anything with them yet. So you will be the first one to show how they, how they look in the finished project. So play with your placements. It could be a bouquet like that and I will have a few leftover flowers and you may decide if you still want to keep them or you want to attach all the shapes you got in your kit. It's up to you. It's your project. Make it perfect for yourself. So that's option number one. I would leave it maybe like that and maybe even add a little bow and ribbon here, 3D, when everything is quilted and just attach it here. And it will look really, really cute. Or the option that I'm going to work with is something that looks more natural, like the tulips are growing in the garden. And I will be positioning the stems on different levels because I like that illusion of growing flowers and flowers are never the same in the garden. So one of my flowers will be taller, another one will be shorter. I'll be playing with that and trim off the extra, the fabric, the fabric that I don't need, like those stems on the bottom. If I pull it up, you will see what I'm talking about. Like all those stems that go lower will be simply cut off okay i like the placement of my stems maybe this one will go 
a little lower for more irregular look and then I'm adding my flowers and then I'm adding my leaves so play with your leaves as well if you pick tulips and you receive tulips as a kit you will have tan leaves in the kit and again it's up to you if you'd like to use them all or you would like to use just eight of them or less just try different positioning and playing with this already cut out shapes is like it really gives us flexibility and we can see the final result before it's stitched down. I would probably leave mine like this. I like this natural look. And some leaves might have two, some flowers might have two leaves or one leaf and that's, that's pretty. The next step will be attaching the appliques to the background. And here I would like to offer you trying different options and I will do both for you just to show you the difference of how different approaches might look. First, I'm going to take colored thread and I'm going to match the thread of uh, each color perfectly. Oops, I, I'm moving this, stay still. I will be matching my green and I will be matching my red as nicely as I can and I have a choice of colors in my stash. Thank you, <laughs> Phil Tech. That's beautiful thread I'm going to work with. And another option you could go with is clear thread and that's my absolute favorite. I love working with clear thread for applique because all the imperfections, all your little mistakes will not be seen. They will be, they will just simply disappear, especially if you choose the right stitch for, um, for this thread. So look at me stitching um, those two samples out for you. I will make another sample with tulips just to show you the difference and choose the way that you like most and go ahead with your favorite way to finish that. There are other ways to finish the appliques for sure. You may use a hand stitch which is very decorative and if you can do that that could be wonderful to see. Just share with us. We will be thrilled and absolutely happy to see how you attach it. I will be showing just the simplest way to attach the applique. So first let's start with our colored thread and I will show you in a few seconds different options of the stitches you may use for uh, this applique and any other applique. But first let me show you the sequence how we're going to attach uh, the leaves and flowers. First I'm going to work on my stems. So you may take a picture of your positioning uh, if you are like nervous that you don't remember how that looked. Take a picture of how you put everything on your uh, background and then we're going to simply leave aside our flowers and also leave aside the leaves. And first thing we're gonna do now is to peel off the paper which you have on the back of each applique shape. So I'm peeling that off and placing my stem where I wanted it to be. You may use a disappearing marker or chalk if you'd like to double check and, and just secure um, the position of each little piece but I'm not afraid to improvise a little bit I know that everything will be beautiful anyway in the end plus the big advantage of these shapes 
in these peel off appliques is that you still may reposition it so until it's not glued completely permanently it's very easy to peel off and reposition and replace so don't be too nervous about it it's it's a fun part okay i'm peeling this off too this one was short and i'm leaving this short as well this one will be longer just simply press your little corner a little bit with your finger And pull like this and peel it off put it in place and just gently press it with your fingers Here's the last one. So when I'm happy with positioning of all my stamps, I'm going to my iron board and again, press all the little details we just attached to the background by again, simply putting my hot iron onto the piece and counting up to 10 and repositioning the iron section by section without moving it along the background fabric. So after this all is attached, we will go to our stitching part. Before you start stitching, decide what seam you would like to go with. I'm going to try a couple of decorative stitches I have on my machine and it depends on your machine which set you have. I'll be trying out just simple classic stitches that are normally used for attaching the applique. And while you're working on your stitch, check how dense you want it to be, how small you want it to be. It all should be in your machine settings and all machines are different. If you have any difficulties, please first read the instructions to your machine. If you still have the questions, go ahead and ask the question. Maybe I will be able to help you because all machines are different. I will do my best to help you, but anyway, read the instructions first. I want my stitch, this stitch to be shorter and um, denser. So I'm now looking at my settings. Let's check that out. You see that it's already, the stitch is already shorter than they were here in the beginning. Maybe a little bit shorter. So on my machine, I'm playing with the settings. I have a very simple basic machine. I'm playing with the length of the stitch and the density of the stitch by simply making it lower. So I go lower here check out how it works on your machine and I'm just trying to find the result that I like by playing with the settings I'm not yeah that's what I'm looking for I think I will go with this stitch and that looks nice to me let's start and attach the applique shapes with the stitches for my first option and then I will show you a couple of more decorative stitches later. So as I mentioned, first we glue our stamps permanently to the background. We do it with a hot iron the way we did with the interfacing. Do not move the iron around, just press it gently and press everything in sections. Now I'm going to attach my stamps and to make it beautifully with the seam that the, the stitches that I showed you before just a few seconds ago, I'm going to line up my needle with the edge of the applique. So every time I want the needle to hit with a straight stitch, 
right along the edge of the applique. So the stitch that goes to the left will be grabbing the fabric of the applique like that. In that case, the straight stitch will create a beautiful outlining for the applique piece. And the stitch that goes to the left and grabs the fabric will hold everything secure. When we get to our turning point, we leave the needle down in the fabric then turn the whole piece over like that press the foot back and just continue going and Now I'm turning again, I leave my needle down Turn the background and keep stitching to the bottom. So, can you see it, that finished result? Looks pretty accurate and if you match the thread nicely with the fabric, it will have a very beautiful look in the end. So, I will just continue working on my piece and you go ahead and start working on yours. See you just in a minute. I've just finished attaching the stems and here you can see that result is pretty neat. I like the stitch so much and I like how the thread, thread blends into the fabric too. Here how it looks on the back. So it's just accurate and neat stitching. Uh, be careful with your tension. Set your tension just right so you don't have any bubbling thread around and it looks beautiful and um, neat. So now I'm going to place all my leaves and maybe you will have a question why do you place everything in such a sequence? Why not to glue everything all together and just stitch around the whole thing? Well I like to do things in small steps in that case you will see the finish line every time for every little step you're completing it's like one big advantage and it's very motivating to do things complicated things especially if you're doing them for the first time in small doable steps and second I like to be sure that everything is attached, that I didn't miss anything, that after the first laundry, the, those things just don't fall apart and everything stays in place. So I just go uh, from like in layers. The stems are obviously the, the first layer because the leaves will be overlapping the stems here and there. And I want to be sure that in that place where the leaf sits onto the stem, the stem underneath is already attached and doesn't move and doesn't um, look ugly or uh, fray after everything is done. So now I'm going to place my leaves. If you took the picture, go ahead and follow the picture that you already saved. I'm again briefly playing with them because I kind of realize how I want them to look. So maybe I will leave this fat one here on the side and the skinny one here. So now I'm going to do the same procedure as I did for the stamps. I will be peeling off all the papers from the back and gluing my leaves onto the stems. 
they may overlap like this so they will create beautiful natural look or they may sit next to your stance improvise find the way you like it most it's your project and you do that the way you like it just following the simple basic rules okay i will finish gluing that and i will go back to my iron board first do not forget to permanently heat it and attach it permanently to your background fabric and then i will go to my machine and stitch everything in place stay with me So if you watched me carefully, you noticed that I gently turned my piece under the needle to follow the curve of the leaf. So that's a recommendation uh, for you, especially if you are a beginner. Stitch slower, do not rush anywhere. Uh, just take your steps little by little and follow the curves of the shapes that I already done for you. Just look carefully at your needle and look how your foot is moving along the shape and you will get through this so little by little every time stop when you want to turn like here on this point you stop with your needle down you turn the whole piece you check out where your needle will go next and you just continue traveling along the edge over and over again yes it will take you some time but the result will be worth it so um, take your time, maybe one leaf at a time, take breaks and you'll get through this. So I will finish my piece now and we will 
jump to the flowers and then butterflies and we will be done. Now I have all my stems and all my leaves attached and I'm going to place my flowers. And again, I will peel the paper off and uh, use the, heat, the hot iron to temporarily attach everything to my background. And at the same time, I will be adding the butterflies here. While I was working on this project now, I decided to add embroidery to the upper corner. So I will keep that in mind that my embroidery will go here. And it would be fun to see if you have embroidery machine or you embroider something by hand. I don't know, some encouraging words. Now it's such an important time to cheer somebody up. Maybe you will give this little project as a gift to somebody so you could embroider uh, some wishes or blessings or maybe you will leave it for yourself and it's nice to have such something positive on the wall especially at these hard times now too okay i peeled um off the paper for my butterfly and i'm attaching just the butterfly i'm leaving the body of the butterfly for later because first i will be attaching all the edges of my butterflies and i will be matching the thread again and here is a tricky point. You can see that my butterfly is multicolored and it has uh, pinks and browns and yellows. So I will just use one color that will go nicely with all these colors. In my case, I will definitely be using brown to emphasize those beautiful brownish uh, patterns on the fabric. So, um, yeah, I'm now peeling that all off, ironing it on, and changing the thread uh, on my machine, attaching the flowers and butterflies. And uh, when I jump to butterflies' bodies, I will show you how I attach those little teeny tiny fan antennas of the butterfly. And we will be so done. So I attach the flowers. If you look here, I used the same stitch that I used for my stems and leaves, but I adjusted it a little bit and made it shorter and more dense. So in that case, it doesn't so show that bad and that big as it does on the leaves. So play with stitches and their sizes, as I mentioned before. And I used the same stitch for my butterfly. You can see that here it's tiny, really small, and, and looks pretty accurate. Now you look at very zoomed in, it's really close to you, but if you zoom out and just imagine that it sits on your wall or uh, on your table, it's not that obvious and the stitches will look pretty accurate. So now I'm on my final step for today. I'm going to attach the butterfly's body and um, how to attach those thin, tiny antennas. I will be simply stitching over them, trying to catch the whole piece at once and adjust my length of the stitch that way that it covers the whole piece but starts and stops right at the edge. So I just don't want the thread to show off significantly but at the same time I want the thread to catch the whole thing accurately. You may switch to zigzag here to be sure that it catches beautifully or stay with the same stitch but pay attention that it does catch the whole thing. So watch me doing this on my butterfly and you will be ready to work on yours.
So now I'm finished with attaching all my applique pieces and you can see that it looks pretty neat and accurate. I like matching the thread for my applique parts. So here I used four different colors. I used green for the leaves. I used tomato red for this shade of red boutique, dark navy for butterflies bodies and chocolate color for butterflies wings. So everything is done and now is ready for our next part for a quilting part. Before we move to the next class, um, just a couple of things to keep in mind as well. Uh, press the top once again carefully and the most important clip all the threads on the back. We don't want these threads to show through the fabric. Uh, we don't want it to be there. So carefully cut off or hide or just, just get rid of these little tails. Be careful, don't cut them too short and secure them before cutting so you are sure everything stays in place and doesn't and doesn't open. Um, here we go. Uh, the next pictures uh, that I'm going to show you uh, illustrates how to finish, how the um, clear thread finish looks like. And it's the thing that I also like when I attach appliques. Clear thread, the, the brand of the clear thread I'll be using is Fieldtech um, 004. Um, I like this a lot, so it's a little bit thicker than uh, their thinner version. They have two different thicknesses. And I'll be attaching my next uh, example, my, my next sample with a tiny zigzag. So I will probably use it a little bit wider zigzag that I use here for a butterfly's uh, body, but uh, well, you will see the result. Uh, give it a try if you wish, and it depends again on your taste if you like everything be colorful and matching, because here the thread really adds special touch and beautiful outlining uh, for the appliques, but this thread will just disappear and you will see it in the next picture. Stay tuned and I can't wait to see you all guys next week uh, for the next week. Prepare um, disappearing marker uh, to mark our top. Uh, a ruler if you're going to play with the ruler and quilt with the ruler. And of course quilting thread and that's it. If you're working on a long arm machine, you're all set. If you're working on a domestic machine, Make sure that you have a special hopping foot for your machine brand. I will probably leave a couple of links uh, for the feet that would work beautifully and that are versatile for different machines. But anyway, go Google your model and be ready. Thank you so much for being with me today and I see you in a week. Bye.